Coming up, Turbo misses out at Ocala. We've got more shock talk. Hoosier adds a late model tire, and we're not sure why. And I've got some breaking sprint car news. Let's go. It's Wednesday, January 31st. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Before we get started, if you might be so kind, click that uh, like button on these videos and subscribe to the channel or the podcast. I had an emailer the other day not want to tune into my show because they told me they couldn't afford to pay for it. It was a reminder to me that I maybe need to be more clear in communicating that this show is free to watch or listen to and free to subscribe to. Hitting the subscribe button on YouTube or podcast places doesn't cost a dollar and there's no sign up to do so. There's no trial periods, there's no credit cards, it's just free. And that won't change in the future. If you want to support what I do here with money, there are certainly ways to do that, but it's not necessary for the shows. Just tune in and enjoy when you uh, when you want to. All right, uh, the Lucas Oil Lay Model Dirt Series took to Ocala Speedway last night for the first of two programs this week. There was a lot of talk uh, afterwards about the positive improvements that were made to the facility and the racetrack, and the racing ended up being really solid. Let's hope that trend continues. Jonathan Davenport was out front early from the pole, but by lap three, it was Tyler Erb who was in control. Turbo took the lead with a slider into turn one that it appeared JD didn't really appreciate as there was contact from the 49 to the rear of the one down the backstretch. So it was the second time in two races that Davenport felt like he'd been roughed up. And I'll be curious to see how this affects his mood and driving style for the remainder of speed weeks. Now, if he feels like the gloves are coming off here pretty early from some of these guys. Turbo was easily the fastest car for the feature, and it looked like he was headed for his first Lucas win in nearly a year. But lap traffic and Ricky Thornton Jr. got in his way. RTJ slipped by the best performance machine, led the final two laps to score his second win of the season, his second win in a row, uh, and his second in three races. Uh, Turbo settled for a second, and Devin Moran was third. The second place finish for Herb was his first Lucas Top 10 since the late model Knoxville Nationals. It was a uh, drought of nine races. It was his first top five finish since Georgetown last August, and he's still winless going back to East Bay in 2023. Since a top five Lucas championship finish in 2021, a season that included seven victories, it's been a tough past two years for Turbo and Best. They've gotten worse each of the last two years, and even though he signed on with Lucas to start 2024, if speed weeks don't go well, it sure as hell seems like this team could peel off and race elsewhere. Post-race, Turbo mentioned the work of Integra Shocks to get him competitive last night. That's been an interesting sub uh, subplot here to start the year. We talked last week about some of the shock drama going on, but this extends beyond that kind of through rod and what is or isn't legal stuff. Several other Rocket chassis teams have switched away from Integra to Fox, including the House Car and Dennis Herb Jr. Most of the main Longhorn teams run Bill Stein, and then you've got other top guys like Brandon Overton and Chris Madden on Penske. We'll see if those Integras can keep uh, Turbo fast the rest of Speed Weeks. Lucas Light Models will do it all over again tonight at Ocala, and then action shifts to Alltech later in the week. Uh, the show will again uh, be live on Flow Racing tonight if you want to tune in and you are not headed out to the racetrack. Uh, in some other dirt late model news uh, from yesterday, Hoosier has made an alteration to its national late model tire program for this season. I actually talked about this program last week when I discussed wanting to know what tire choices teams were making for the features. The NLMT program originally included four options with the one being the softest, the four being the hardest, and the two and three being kind of in between. At this point, uh, Lucas and the Outlaws really only usually allow the two, three, and four for their races. You don't often see the one uh, available uh, in their rules. In a press release, Hoosier announced they are adding a 2.25 version, which will be just a bit harder than the current two tire. According to Dirt on Dirt, though, in a clarification from Hoosier Shannon Rush, the new tire will be region specific, with him mentioning the Northeast. And Lucas Series Director Rick Schwally told those guys that Lucas will not be adding the 2.25 tire to their legal choices. And if, Lee, uh, if Lucas is not allowing it, I would assume that Steve Francis and the Outlaws would be aligned on that as well. It's a bit of a curious decision and seems to kind of go against the initial plan of creating a simplified tire offering via the NLMT program in the first place. Sounds like some uh, around the sport are questioning this move as well. I teased yesterday that we might uh, break some sprint car news on the show today, so let's do that, shall we? Uh, back in December, I did a Dirt Tracker Conversations episode with sprint car driver Zach Hampton. And after a couple of years of trying to grind it out on his own, he talked about being on the hunt for a new deal for 2024. He put out social media posts about it and spent you know, a good part of the offseason trying to hustle something down. And for a lot of the time, he was a, a one-man band with his sprint car team, and he knows it's going to be difficult to succeed that way. 
After working through the last several weeks and months, Hampton has his plan now in place for this season. He's going to move his own equipment, his race cars, and all of his stuff from Indiana to the Knoxville area to be ready when the season starts there in April. He's got a place to live and space to keep his 35 car lined up. And then during the week, he's going to work in the shop for Dennis Ganey, keeping up the team at DGRD Sprint Cars, which at the moment includes 410 stuff for Brandon Wimmer and a run at the 360 Knoxville Track Championship for Darren Nida. And when he's not working for Ganey, he'll be able to keep his own cars ready as he'll be taking on the Knoxville 410 Track Championship in 2024 himself. Hampton finished sixth in the season finale at Knoxville last year, among several other appearances at the Sprint Car Capital of the World. From there, uh, Hampton will fill in other 410 races as his schedule and resources allow. This will be a big shift for Hampton, who spent 2023 racing all over, including in Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, and elsewhere. Uh, he made starts with the Outlaws, the All-Stars, High Limit. He did pick up a fast series win at Circle City in June as well. And this will be a good year to hit Knoxville weekly as they just upped their regular purses, adding nearly $5,000 each night for feature finishers. Races are now $6,000 to win. That's up from $5,000 to win. And there's 700 to start. That's up from 625. If you haven't checked out the interview I did with Zach, I would encourage you to do so. He talks about being what he called the most hated sprint car driver and the challenges of trying to grind out a career as a driver a little further down the pecking order. So if you kind of want to know what it means to not be a Brad Sweet or a, a Kyle Larson or a Donnie Schatz at the top, this would be a good one to check out. Uh, around the other dirt racing podcast this week, Quick Time has Clinton Boyles. Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Dylan Baldwin. Dirt Track Confessions has Jerry Higby. Hoagie's Garage has Scott Winters. Turn 2 Terribles has Austin Berry and Cody Hartlub. Plum Wild has Dylan Yeager. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, TJ Slideway's Open Wheel Spectacular, and Across the Groove. To see the full list of shows and episodes, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcast. Also, if you know of anything uh, that's out there in the dirt racing world that's a podcast that I don't have listed here, feel free to reach out to me uh, via email or social media DMs. I would obviously like this to be uh, as complete a list as possible. And we have added a bunch of new shows here uh, recently. Uh, that's it for today's daily show. You do have several streaming options for this Wednesday, so don't forget uh, to hit up the streaming schedule at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Keep an eye on your email inboxes tonight as well. I am hoping to have a new slider piece out to you guys. Uh, the slider is free to sign up for. You can do that over at dirttracker.com slash the slider. This will be from a new writer who has not yet appeared uh, in the newsletter before. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.